Hi, uh, I'm Osman from Brunei Darussalam. Now, um, let me talk about art in Brunei. Uh, it started, I mean, one of the earliest uh, record, which is from a Western perspective, how they describe art uh, in Brunei. And when Anthony, uh, Antonio Pagafita uh, visited Brunei, and he he make uh, an you know, uh, elaborate uh, description of uh, Brunei culture, which um, he says that uh, there was a parade where led by a elephant and people were wearing um, brocade, uh, what do you call it here, Xinjiang, you know, it's just, just like a, a cloth uh, over your, your hips for the men. And uh, he also managed to describe uh, what people wear during that time, so, uh, which he observed. Um, they wear uh, some, some bit of jewelry and all this, you know. So <clears throat> now um, it indicates that Brunei has actually has rich in uh, in culture, and uh, that is um, when they parade to the royal court. He also noticed that. Uh, how the architecture was uh, during that time and which you can see uh, in what we call Kota Batu in Brunei now, you know, uh, where the remains of um, Brunei culture at the time. That was uh, somewhere in um, 1520s when he visited that. Of course, uh, Brunei culture goes way back uh, there. Uh, before that. Uh, today, uh, the manifestation of our culture, actually, you can see when you go to along <coughs> uh, the banks of Brunei River in the, in the city, you can see the uh, water village. Uh, the water village hosted, uh, it used to be about 30,000 before, but now I think it's uh, shrinking a bit. Uh, because they are not opening a new settlement there. In the early days, um, Kampung Air or Water Village is uh, bustling with um, commerce, culture, and uh, a lot of activities. Uh, as stated in uh, <coughs> some some of the early uh, manuscript by the Europeans, and. It's where the sales, it's where the traders meet as well. The traders from uh, China sell their pottery and ceramic and also uh, the, uh, the precious stone. And also from Thailand where they bring the potters, uh, pottery. So <clears throat> in Brunei itself, until um, year 1970s, I think I recall, we have villages on the Kampung Air that are specialized in uh, their own trade. One is, for example, uh, one village is expert in uh, weaving the, uh, what we call, kan songket, which is a, a traditional, uh, just like a, a woven with golden thread and, you know, cottons. So one, one village is uh, expert in doing the weaving and one, exp uh, one village is expert in <coughs> uh, metalworks or silverware which they do jewelries and all sort of things. So, <coughs> um, but of course that has disappeared uh, but um, in the, uh, that, that era during that 1970s as, as well the government feel that you know uh, the the old trade that because of the uh, oil we we found oil and a lot of people was uh, looking at jobs being employed rather than uh, doing their own trade uh, as what we are used to do before so <clears throat> looking at that uh, government established uh, arts and handicraft center which started uh, modestly in somewhere in uh, Burung Pingai, what because an, 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 another village, and now uh, become 
something that is we can proud of. Uh, no, uh, quite a big establishment where we train uh, young people or people who are interested in doing the ancient craft of Brunei. So just like silverware, carving, uh, weaving, which is quite successful. Without without that uh, institution, I think uh, most of our craft will be gone. You know, so. This is one of the initiative, I think, uh, adorable initiative, I think, to ensure that uh, the culture that doesn't disappear. Um, and of course, goes along with it is uh, is a work of art. Right? It's the the uh, traditional uh, ways of life Brunei used to do before, and that come along with it, uh, showing. How how great our civilization, Brunei civilization, was a uh, long time ago, and not only showing, for example, uh, those weaving, or whether there are two type of weaving. One is uh, weaving uh, for, you know, doing basketry. So that is also uh, a craft. Of course, there's a lot of uh, basketry. We can find it almost in. Uh, Asia, but some uniqueness as well uh, in Brunei bas basketry. Now, looking at the all the arts that has been done, the craftsmen uh, at that time was uh, actually what, what I used to always call because before before the coming of uh, uh, Western art, which we are doing now, you know, uh, we have paint brush on canvas or whatever now coming uh, with new thing with installation uh, but before that our art was um, based on the the needs of the uh, the culture of course when we talk about brunei we don't only talk about the brunei now because brunei was at uh, the whole uh, bono island at the time you know so actually there's a lot of diversity in in uh, different ethnic, uh, you know, in in projecting or creating their arts uh, according to different different needs of their culture. Some of them are creating um, something for the kitchen, something for storage, and all those uh, requires you know skill and and. Along with it is the how they express themselves, how they how they you know uh, look at the 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 time, the aesthetic at the time. So not only aesthetic, but I think it's the also the technology goes with it. For example, weaving is a if you if you look at it properly, it's quite complex and quite you know quite uh, sophisticated. Uh, Technology to to do, you know. I a lot of people don't know how to do to do weave, but people people who do weaving, uh, which are quite expert, they can do a lot of things with with weaving. You know, uh, uh, of course, at the time when they do weaving, is for the for the practicality of the uh, the people. I mean, at the time, for example, if you are uh, for storage, okay. You you build a storage. What is it for? Is it storage for food, for um, for clothes, and all sort of things? You know? And goes with it, they try to um, they try to express themselves there by patterns and by the way they weave it. So trying to achieve that uh, aesthetic, they had to think think how how to do it. And go, comes with it. They are developing a technolo technology with it, you know. And for example, weaving whether our coin songket, or mm -hmm. you know, and also the uh, basketry. Basketry. They are furniture actually making. furniture making. Yeah, they are great mathematician as well. Right. How they weave, you know, how they count, and if they create new things, they had to count. Okay, how many thread go in to create that flowery pattern so they are also the science goes into yeah there's a <laughs> science uh, so usually in other cultures usually um, like what we saw the great artist you know, is also a great 
technology, uh, technologies, you know, like Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. because um, they try to create something and goes with it, we, in order to achieve that, uh, you know, the static, you need to think something. How can we do it? So this goes with our our Brunei uh, culture as well. We, uh, our great artist before us has uh, great you know, technology, built, uh, create, created a great technology to go to create that art as well. Yeah, of course now we are looking at, um, we have still, still have, uh, we carry on with our, our um, traditional art you know, to make it alive. Of course, uh, as in other, other media, uh, it's an evolving, uh, you know, people create new things, but uh, you, you still maintain the traditional um, pattern, the technology of it, you know, that, that have been used. Like Kan Songket, I think the technology used is still the old, which is being created uh, centuries ago, and people are still using it, creating, creating it, but of course the, the patterns are different. And uh, even our dancers, our dancer, I mean dance, uh, we we recreate them to make it more more relevant to uh, today's today's time. Uh, uh, but the elements of traditional elements are still very very strong there. <laughs> I see uh, a lot of talents in Brunei, actually. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I, I try to help them to provide platform. Uh, I'm, I'm hosting a, what I call Emerge Exhibition. It's a one-year cycle exhibition where I'll, I'll showcase um, works of um, artists that has not been exposed, but I saw, I see a great potential there. So either it's from student or teachers, young teachers or other people who, who are don't you know uh, have a, having different profession. Uh, we don't have a lot of full time artists in Brunei, but there are great there are a lot of great talents. So this is a platform like this you know, uh, and other platform as well, uh, which is provided by either government or private people. Uh, for them to showcase their talents, mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> to to ensure that uh, you know art is something that uh, we take sometimes we take for granted. You know? Okay, we look when we walk outside. If you are in your house, you see furnitures which are also created by designers. You know, it's a downstream of art. You know? Uh, you see the your painting or decoration hang hung on your on your um, wall it's a creation of art. You go to the kitchen, all the plates, all the you know, all the cutlery are all being designed. So, and when you go out of your your house, you see sign sign signage, road sign. You see the shop sign signs, and you see it's all the work of graphic arts as well and they are not they are not <coughs> they are not um, they are not just done like that you know it's, it's it's being designed so when you go the car you drive is also being designed and the clothes you wear the fashion you wear is also uh, being designed actually in in our every everyday life we are surrounded by uh, creation of our our culture, so uh, so you know so much that we are surrounded by it. We take it for granted, and you you never think about who created you know uh, the 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 clothes you wear. Of course, if you are wearing designer's clothes, you 
you know well, who, who created Shame. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, creation created by people who are known. Just like you know songs, a lot of uh, our folk songs. We don't know who created them. It passes uh, generation after generation that we don't know actually because I think in Asia we don't we don't you know we are we don't actually uh, like to claim it's our work you know, until of course now we are conscious of it because we have uh, IP intellectual property rights you know so th these are the things that we take for granted um, and the culture I mean the arts uh, help to build the culture mm -hmm. and help to build the identity mm -hmm. and we, we look at uh, even though now we're looking at the popular culture now as new popular cu culture uh, take for example in Korea they built a new new culture from uh, from the east to the west and Latin America know how to sing K-pop and comes along with it is suddenly people uh, go into Korean culture and you see Korean uh, restaurant is everywhere mm -hmm. so so these these are the things that you know that's how powerful uh, yeah it is. how powerful Art. it is yeah? mm -hmm. arts and culture mm -hmm. uh, to for people to recognize uh, a certain uh, group mm -hmm. so the um, we in here sometimes we don't we don't take thing for granted but actually uh, it's a powerful thing is that there are a lot of countries trying to find um, especially small country, developing country, what uh, to find a, a strong identity to represent uh, themselves. Mm. So they try to f they study the culture. This is where where you know um, we should look which is the the powerful uh, segment of our culture that mm -hmm. can can be accepted by other cultures as well and mm -hmm. can make it uh, a strong piece mm -hmm. that can identify, I mean, identify ourselves and how people look at, it, look at us.